Uh, today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a uh, development drawing from a three-dimensional sheet metal assembly in Solid Edge. Uh, we start by opening the sheet metal document and we're going to create, well the first surface that we're going to create is the flat surface or a flat surface, so I'm going to use the bottom uh, and to do that we use the tab tool uh, and by selecting the tab tool we're then asked to choose which of the planes we want to work from. And because it's the base of my object I'm going to select the, the top frame which is a, a flat surface from top or bottom. You can see it's then created into a two dimensional view or a view from the top and I can use any one of these draw tools in order to create a shape. Uh, I'm just going to use a basic rectangle to start with uh, with a width of 150 and a height of 100 and an angle obviously of 0. So I'm just entering through those and I can now drag my box or my shape to the center of the screen there. Uh, I can continue to alter that if I wanted to create a chamfer on the sides there or a, uh, a fillet on the sides I could do that but I'm happy with that at the moment so I'm going to click my box there to indicate that I'm done and my tab over here is asking me for a thickness now in some cases this will already be open and you'll be able to see that without having to click tab there but I'm going to choose 0 0.05 or sorry 0 0.5 of a millimeter because I want my job to be made out of cardboard so I want it to be fairly thin and the other thing that Solid Edge is asking me to do is to indicate which direction I want that extrusion to move up or down and really it doesn't matter in this case so I'm going to just select up so I've clicked my mouse there and now I'm left with my um, tab and I can click finish. <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is uh, add some sides to that uh, tab uh, and we do that by using the flange tool. Uh, the flange as you can see will create a curve or an edge on any one of the sides of my tab. So I'm going to start over here and you can see there are a number of options now we can select the full width or a centered tab and I'm going to use full width for the moment we can select a bend from the inside or the outside uh, and I'll select outside and we can select down here the height of that tab and the step which is the distance when we move our tab up and down and I'll demonstrate that now so every time I move this up it's moving up 10 millimeters okay so I'm going to go up about 60 that's fine and I right and I left click once and I click finish and that's a basic square tab on the edge of my or flange on the edge of my tab. I'm going to demonstrate now uh, how to make some changes to one of these so I'll simply draw another flange on the opposite side clicking that edge uh, I'll go up again 60 and if I would like this flange to be exactly the same height as the one on the opposite side for example I can simply move my mouse to that edge and you might see very quickly a little red line comes up with a dot on the end of it and that's indicating that uh, I'm drawing to that same height so my flange is the same height uh, I'm going to click finish and then I'm going to click the select tool and that's enabling me to select part of my job that I want to edit so by selecting flange 2 and using my select tab I can now edit the profile and that means that I can add for example a fillet uh, of say 5mm radius to this edge and this edge and we get the fillet there uh, if I want to I can also adjust this angle here so using my select tool I can now adjust this angle to for example 70 degrees and I get a 70 degrees shift in that line there. Um, so it's quite useful for creating various shapes uh, and effects on the side of our, our job. So that's all filleted and I can obviously adjust the, the radius of that fillet as well. If I just type 5, I get a 5 mil fillet there. So once I'm happy with my shape, uh, I again need to select the checkbox there and there is the profile that I've just created. The last thing I want to show you uh, is how to create uh, a, a flange with an additional tab which is a little bit like what I just did but there's an easier way if I'm happy with just using squares. So again I'm going to select the flange tool, 
I'm going to select my edge. I'm going to go up uh, to the same height as the previous two. So I've just selected my uh, height indicated there. And once I've, I'm happy with that height, and I've clicked finish, I can then add an additional tab to that. So by click, selecting the tab tool and selecting that surface that I want to add the tab to, and zooming out a little bit, Uh, I can now add a tab onto that surface that I just created. So I'm going to choose a rectangle by two points and this time I'm going to draw that rectangle manually. So I can see again that indicator telling me that I'm on the edge of the line. I'm going to click once and I can now adjust the height and the width of that box. And it honestly doesn't matter, it's just a demo, so I'm going to just click here and say that I'm happy with that. And it has added that tab to that flange quite easily. If I click finish you can see it automatically converts them into one part. So that's uh, how to add all of my sides and you can do that continuously until you've, you're happy with your three-dimensional shape. And then in order to create a development which is a flat version of this object I need to click save as and I'm going to save it as a flat. Sorry. I'm going to click save as and move over here to save as flat and you might have seen there it asks me uh, to save it as a PAR file and I'll show you that shortly but firstly it's saying click on a face to be orientated upward so I'm just going to select my base because that's obviously a flat side that will be orientated upwards and the x-axis I haven't actually found a need or any difference uh, in which line I select so I'm going to select any line and here is this section where I need to make sure that I select part Okay, so if we go to part document.par, change our object there, I'm going to name this video2 and save it. And shortly it will show me how this object is going to look when it's flat. There we go. Now I can't do much with that yet. I need to now import that into a draft document. And that draft document is one that can then be viewed by Illustrator and then uh, used on the laser cutter. So I want a new and I want an ISO draft. Any draft document is fine if you've got a template that's less complicated than the one that I'm about to show you, uh, which has obviously a lot of detail included in it. So to import my part, I click on my view wizard. Uh, video 2 was the one that I just saved and you should be able to access that fairly easily. Uh, click open. Now here are a whole bunch of options that I can use to add elements to this page. So I just basically go through and I choose my top view because I started from the top on that top uh, plane. And clicking next and finish and then I can just dump that anywhere on that document and there is the development of my shape in a draft which finally in order to open in Illustrator I need to save as a DWG. So that DWG, as you can see, now is open by Adobe Illustrator, and I can now go and edit that, add features to it that are necessary for the laser cutter, and then cut it, and I'm finished. Thanks for watching.